Hello and welcome to Ada Pulse, Cardano's independent media news outlet funded by Project Catalyst. And as we're fresh out the blocks of Fund 11, part of this new funding round is we're doing Project Deep Dives. And today I'm diving into a doja. So I met of, uh, a couple of members from the team, Chris and Peter. Poor Chris was poorly coughing his way through, but he just about made it. So we're really grateful. And I've made him a little gift at the end just to celebrate his little coughing fits that he was having. So do check that out. But... In the meantime, do remember to click the like button, hit subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified as soon as we've got content available. And it is worth clicking on that because we, we often on Space Place and things like that, they get live streamed straight out the blue without any announcements. So it is worth staying tuned for that. But anyway, I'm Josh from ATM State Ball. You present Afraid of Pulse. Let's just speak Edoja, shall we? So, Edoja, guys, welcome to Ada Pulse. Uh, if you could just, guys, quickly introduce yourself, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. My name is Peter, uh, Peter Wilcott. I've been uh, in the Cardano community since, well, 2020, 2021. Uh, I was, I've been active in Project Catalyst since Fund 5, um, helping projects uh, in my virtual office jockey project management capacity. And uh, I'm super interested in governance. And yeah, recently, uh, Adoja, well, in Fund 10, Adoja was funded to do uh, to build out a governance framework in public. So we've uh, had some fun uh, with our community uh, in that effort. And, and that's me, Chris. Yeah, um, I'm Chris Hockaday, and um, I've been tinkering on Adoja for several years since i guess 2017 2018 <clears throat> with kyle i'm off camera because i look like crap and i feel like crap today <laughs> and uh josh and i have been trying to get this lined up for a while so i'm not backing down um that's right but uh, you know one of our you know our primary aim is kind of in a in an area of uh decentralized manufacturing and um We've been very focused on that for a few years. And um, as Peter mentioned, the last year or so, we've been very focused on governance. And during the last, I'd say, eight or nine months, we've been really, really heavy in that department. Uh, we were funded, as Peter said, again, in Fund 10 for that very initiative. And um, that's kind of our primary goal at the moment. So, uh, Also, I mean, uh, you know, for you, you look at the website, and obviously there's lots of different parts to a doja but can you give sort of the ada pulse audience a brief overview of what a doja sort of is and and what inspired its creation this is a good question there's a quite a bit of history i'm gonna let chris take this one because he's right there's the doja effort and the brand and the initiative has been alive for it predates me down back to 2017 so go ahead chris yeah yeah, when I, when I first learned about Cardano, it was actually from Kyle Solomon. Um, he's the CEO of Vidoja. Um, I was over at his house. We both lived in North Carolina at the time. I now live in Indiana, and he's out in Puerto Rico. But <clears throat> um, he just threw this idea at me and said, hey, what do you think about decentralized manufacturing? And it was just such a bizarre concept to me. It was really hard for me to put my mind around it. And this was in 2018, you know, it was a long time ago. As far as crypto years, that was 150 years ago. <laughs> Dark ages. Yeah. <laughs> the old cycles. Yeah. Pointed yeah. <laughs> it to me. I was like, okay, this is neat. Um, I don't, I don't see how it can happen, but it's, this is neat, right? Because even at the time, Ethereum smart contracts were, were fairly new. Um, mm. and anyway, we. Adoja began at kind of at that point as a um, IoT infrastructure company. And so Kyle and I were developing IoT hardware for monitoring um, soil moisture level in a garden and triggering uh, watering events uh, based on moisture level. Then so we started playing around with uh, gas sensors and it was really hardware oriented, you know, doing IoT stuff. 
<clears throat> and leveraging blockchain to kind of carry out some of those activities. And um, and actually going even further back than that, Adoja was an ad tech company. Um, so it's really had a lot of evolutions over time. So, I mean, when you say IoT, just it's for people out there, that's the Internet of Things. So, that's right. yeah, so that's things, anything that's on the a device on the Internet. I mean, a lot of it. We've mentioned on the Ada Pulse channel before useless stuff like, you know, Wi-Fi toasters and things like that, which, which are essentially the Internet of Things. But obviously there are useful things like I have a security system in my home, which I can access through my phone. And I've and got these lights in my room. Oh, I can change it. Boom, boom. All different <laughs> colors. Yeah. IoT. <laughs> so, I mean, so my next question is, is. Um, so what makes Edoja unique compared to other sort of IoT platforms that are out there? I think there? We, we, we've, re we've really refined the idea of decentralized manufacturing over the last four or five years. Um, and kind of what that looks like as far as Cardano is concerned. And just for the record, we kind of start, we started on Ethereum. Um, that was our, our goal at the time because there was no... Oh. There was no infrastructure on Cardano at the time. Um, you're, you're going, we're going back, you know, five, six, seven, eight years. And uh, you know, Kyle, when, when Charles did the whiteboard video, Kyle sent me the video and said, "You need to watch this." And and I did, and I was fascinated. Um, but the tools weren't quite there yet. The vision was there for sure, but the tools weren't there. And I was, I was interested but i wasn't nearly as excited as kyle was <laughs> and so I, I stayed away from cardano for a long time and it wasn't until probably well not a long time probably, it was probably 2019 when i really started in, engaging with the space and then once you know in 2020 when we when we had the merry hard fork that's when native assets went live on the cardano blockchain and that kind of changed the game for what we were able to do and then later on in that same year, um, we kind of went into the uh, the Gogan era where we had some more contracts. <clears throat> so decentralized manufacturing, kind of the, 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 the real mission there is to bring economic opportunity to places where it never existed before. And in, you know, and, and we're on, uh, we're on test net now with the platform, but you can go to a doja.market and play around with, uploading um manufacturing files in a decentralized way that a 3d printer can can make use of <laughs> and really what that looks like is you know there's kind of it's kind of a three-party system you have a designer a manufacturer and then an end user and you know a designer can design design parts and go upload their uh design files to the, to the platform and then an end user can come on the platform and say, okay, I want to, I want to have this thing made, manufactured, produced for me. And then a, another party can come in and say, okay, I can, I'm in your area. I can print this for you for X amount of ADA. And other people can bid on that job. And the end user decides what makes the most sense for them. They, they pull the trigger on that job and then it's a done deal. Mm -hmm. The great thing about it is a, a, a product designer can um, use the blockchain to insist on, you know, royalties. So they, you know, anytime one of their products is designed, if it's not an open source design, um, they're kind of guaranteed that royalty payment uh, by virtue of Cardano. Yeah, it's good. But, but more, I think more importantly, this gives somebody the ability to have a, a very low cost investment, three hundred, four hundred dollars. You know, if you, if you look at the three D printer and then the supplies to run it, <coughs> as long as they have that access to um, internet infrastructure and supplies, you know, the filaments and all those things, they can basically spin up their own business and run it on a Doja, uh, no matter where they are in the world, and. That's kind of always been our goal is to be able to to create a, a novel economic opportunity for people in in anywhere on the planet, you know, where, where these things may not have existed before. And, you know, economic freedom, 
um, it's it's always kind of been a core tenet of a dojo and, and what our mission is. And it's it's certainly going to evolve over time. And, you know, hopefully, I hope at some point we'll bring some of the IoT stuff back and get, get a little more involved in that area. Um, but for now, this, you know, this this focus where we are right now, I think, makes the most, most sense for the ethos of Cardano. Yeah, so, I mean, put simply, what you're saying is, you know, when it comes to the 3D printing side of it, like, as you said, you're, that's what you're focusing on. You literally, it's it's a it's a global marketplace that you want to build, and you have someone who designs it, and someone who wants that design will then find a, a manufacturer, and another there'll be lots of people bidding on it, and you're most likely going to choose the one that's closest to you because that's your shipping costs. Essentially, is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty much hits it on the head, and 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 you can see how how we've we've used 3D printing as a the baseline example, we've sold uh, a, an NFT project that uh, can be physically printed into the real world and shipped to you. We have 3D printers standing by right now who are ready and capable of, of printing that, that NFT into life. Um, and so, yeah, this is the Doja right now is, is, is kind of a special a marketplace that, yeah, facilitates the, this, uh, this, uh, the ability to yeah upload these these files that could be additive manufacturing like 3D printing and they could be um they could be subtractive manufacturing like um other types of files these are pretty much we're putting STL files on IPFS and then um, selling contracts that point to those files that say uh, that's the thing I want to print and so the the, a buyer puts that up out there. Printers see them and bid on them, and uh, and then the the buyer chooses which printer, and ah, voila, you get uh you get something. It shows up. A package shows up at your uh, house in in a few weeks. Now, and where well, we've been talking in our governance conversations. Well, how do we how do we make sure we have good quality control? What types of uh, I was actually just about to ask that. Yeah. That was going to be my next question. So yeah, so how how do you ensure good quality control? <laughs> well, right now it's about having good relationships with our printers and 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 working on cultivating relationships with people who are entering uh, the the 3D printing uh, trade or hobby um, and and supplying them with the the knowledge. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to get over the initial learning curve that is 3D printing because it can be quite a pain and I can attest to that. Uh, you, you buy a 3D printer and especially like Chris said, you can buy it. You can get into the game for, yeah, like three, 400 bucks all in, but you're probably going to spend uh, 24 hours worth of time at least tuning that machine and getting it set up and 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 so it's cranking out stuff consistently at a level of quality that you can be proud of now that the quality game definitely is the hardest thing here because anybody can design a 3d file in blender and 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 put put <laughs> put it on ipfs and say print this for me but then it has to be sliced so the machine so the 3d printer knows how to read it and and tweak so that's that's a really a hard part so we're when when we uh if this if this is to scale we will need to have um we'll need to have someone who works in a dojo who can help facilitate and has some really high level of knowledge to curate and help the printers make sure that the files they're getting from the designers are up to spec, and so that's there's going to be there's going to be some relationships with the designers who are who are interested in being serious about designing for the marketplace, and what quality like what quality standards um, need uh, will be in place for the de designs that are submitted, so that on the back end, once that design goes to the printer, um, he doesn't have like a bunch of troubleshoot he gets a file he can print not something he has to edit and do it design himself and then he doesn't get the royalty for the guy who sold a, a design so yeah there's a lot of governance and stuff to play around so we've been thinking all right well what 
what reputate how we how do we manage reputation and stuff like that literally just show. about to ask that that was <laughs> like i was waiting for you to stop talking so i could say <laughs> uh, would there be some sort of reputation score because obviously no you know two different 3d printers they're not the same are they so um, yeah some so, are going to be higher quality than others and i guess that will you'd have some sort of scoring system or something and that would come under government we right? do have a concept of a reputation system now um it's not in practice yet yeah we have the concept of it so we haven't really refined that idea to an implementation level but it does it is there and it will have to, it, it will have to be there for sure yeah and there's like different rating schemes you know ebay has one ratings one way of rating stuff and doing leaving reviews and whatnot i think that at <laughs> we're talking minimum viable governance for a small business that needs to manage quality for for this mechanism you will have to it's going to be about the people um you're not going to just you're the system is needs to be decentralized and the ability to, for anybody to come up and put a, a design on there and it possibly get printed but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be a lot of work for the printer to do so for the people who are really serious, it's going to be, well, there's going to be human interaction in our Discord and whatnot as we curate and work to, yeah, keep the quality high and keep the, not the, not the barrier to entry high, but you need to, you need to have a, uh, like a relationship. Is that what you're you need talking to have a relationship the... with the printers and with the printers definitely like i i'm i think you could have a, quite a few designers and have a few because the, pr the the successful 3d printers that i know of have 10 to 30 3d printers in a room and they're cranking the little little the uh, hobbyist who has w one to three to five is going to be able to do certain types of prints you know they're going to have their vein of 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 their domain of expertise um in certain types of things and so i think we'll be able to match designers with printers who are able to you know uh put their style into into reality whether it's certain types of re like cert like you can only do certain levels of a curve with certain types of filament you know you can only like stack stack plastic <laughs> yeah there's there's it, in so many ways um so and the printers themselves only print a certain size right so, and um, yeah and then there's size dependencies as well 100 percent. so lots of complexity so that's why i said i think we a lot of times when we think DAOs or you know governance mechanisms for web3 companies um we get quite a bit heady and think that they can be automated at completely well decentralized autonomous organization essentially means that well there can be systems in place that execute without human intervention once an initial parameter has been met or you know uh initiated and uh but it's not as simple. It's not all quite as simple as as that. There's still a ton of 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 shaky hands and having human connection and friendship um, that that actually <laughs> is the value that we're transmitting between each other. This is just the documentation, the accounting, essentially of it, of of these interactions and 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 storing them in a way that that uh, can be trusted over time and that's what makes these things cool but you can't build a DAO that is too complex and then will fall on its face because it has too much order <laughs> it's an interesting mm -hmm. conundrum and so uh, when i think about uh, the doja service DAO, i imagine at launch you know two to three employees that are just really invested and have a high level of knowledge about um 3d printing and and 3d design and and they Ha they work one on one with the designers and people and printers who are interested in sustaining in participating in the marketplace and at the end of the day it's right now in the package that we have with the doja it's a marketplace it's a special type of mar marketplace with a unique vision that i think has a lot of potential in the future 
decentralized manufacturing sounds like it could work mm, for a lot of things. I think most manufact like is most like special high quality fabrication happens with, like the people who buy parts are far away from each other and but what or like maybe a, a, a couple city, towns away you know so uh and it but at the end of the day it's all about relationships so we're kind of um we have a marketplace and we're ready to start building relationships <laughs> i guess that's kind of where yeah because i mean it, yeah i mean people like i mean obviously you know businesses like loyal customers but um and that's that's just obvious but um you know the the consumers the customers they do want a relationship with their you know with their manufacturers in, in this sort of sense i would have thought because yeah you, you find someone you like he's done so oh he's done something a lot of reliability oh, yeah, yeah yeah and always, always like oh he did this it was tricky but this guy did it so i'm just going to stick with this guy you know and then they'll give him the relevant sort of rankings or whatnot so chris i mean um so the marketplace that pete was talking about he you know that obviously isn't running yet so that's still something you're still working on um yeah it's on test now is there a timeline on that and are there any sort of you know is there sort of examples where you, in the real world where edoja has already made a significant difference um there is no timeline unfortunately because of some of the issues we ran into on testnet um but I guess our timeline moving forward is is pretty much this. So our goal now is to we we still have a fun nine proposal that's open, um, and so we're trying to get that closed out now. And it's just a kind of a, a few modifications to the Pluto script. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna migrate everything from Plutus to Aiken. Sounds like a good idea. Yep. Um, it it makes us good neighbors on the blockchain plus. It gives us a lot of flexibility moving forward um, with other developers who might uh, join the team over time. But also, we're going to move to a side chain. And the guys over at Living Green Urban Farms and um, Agro Labs, um, and there's a few other people involved with that project, they're working on a side chain launcher toolkit that anybody on Cardano can make use of. And that's going to be a big deal. And it, it makes a lot of sense for a Doja to go to a side chain because there's so many transactions involved with one true transaction on a Doja, um, five to seven, depending on the nature of the transaction. <clears throat> um, we're just going to contribute bloat to the main chain, and we don't want to do that. Plus, we have more control over the speed of uh, transactions on the chain and the cost of the uh, menu TXO. And we can use the Adoja token to, you, you know, to operate that system. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> now that's probably that's going to happen this year. Um, I don't know what the what the, the scale actually looks like, um, but you know, there's a couple of things you and Peter were talking about that kind of sparked some ideas and uh, reminded me of some things, but. You know what what we're doing there's there's several areas where i think this really improves um the logistics of manufacturing and you know one is obviously just streamlining the manufacturing process <clears throat> and we've talked about that already quite a bit but you know it's, it's a new it's a novel shopping experience whereas you know now you just go on amazon or you know whatever website etsy wherever and you buy a thing and it comes to your door. But now you have kind of the opportunity to really customize things and develop relationships like you were just talking about with the people who are actually making the thing you want to buy. Um, but, you know, going back to the lo location issue, it r reduces the, the, the requirement to have big warehouses filled with things that just sit there. Right, um, you know, it, it's on-demand manufacturing. So the, the thing you want doesn't have to be made until you want it. <laughs> and then you don't have the expenses of, you know, transportation costs, um, all of those things. So, you know, how does Edoja ensure the, the security and, and like privacy of the users um, of their data in that sort of Internet of Things space? 
that's an encryption level thing. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to have to, that's going to have to evolve. Um, Cause currently, you know, the end user data is secure, but it's also centralized and we want this to be an entirely decentralized system. And so we're going to have to, um, we have some ideas there. I mean, there's, there's several ways we can go with the encryption part of user data and how things are revealed. <clears throat> and, you know, there might be some things, we, some pages we take out of the playbook of midnight, you know, on how we do that. Um, but, the, you know, there, it, it remains to be seen exactly how we're going to do it, but we're, it's going to have to be done, obviously, um, because in order for it to be purely decentralized, uh, user data has to be very carefully encrypted and, and obscured from, from the public ledger. But I think, yeah, uh, yeah, like, like you, you mentioned, yeah, going down the midnight route. Uh, for those who don't know, midnight is the sort of privacy coin um, linked to Cardano. Um, was actually going to be on the Cardano chain, I thought. But yeah, it looks like it's a chain all to itself. But yeah, um, I mean, I, I think it's just a new, I think it's a, it's a new way to say side chain. Is all it is, you know, because a side chain is there. A side chains that are, are their own chains, they're just connected at the finality level with the main chain. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So talking of side chains, I mean, you know that that then becomes a feature of Edoja. I mean, is there any other standout features that people need to be aware of with Edoja? I think that's really kind of the core thing. Is is you know economic freedom. You know, I know it, it, it might sound cliche at this point, but that's kind of always been our um, one of our primary goals is to give people tools to be able to change their own lives wherever they may be. Um, obviously, depending on the infrastructure they have available to them. Um, but, you know, with the you know, with, with the rollout of World Mobile, for example, um, bringing Internet ac access to people who never had it before. That that gives us the ability to you know to put a doja in their hands, and be able to do something like this, where they've never had it before, um, and and I and I think this is kind of, you know I think it's it, it's everybody's goal. We we want a, a Cardano to be, uh, you know, adopted by mainstream users, and you know a you know a global economic power. <laughs> and the only way to do that is with with internet access. Everybody has to have access to the internet, you know, in some kind of capacity. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, I can see people. You know, I mean, Africa has got a huge workforce that's very young as well. So very, so very keen to get. I imagine to get on this sort of thing once they once the internet is rolling out, like you say, with World Mobile, and that that will bring all sorts of opportunities and revenue for them. For them to start getting on things like Edoja, and maybe by that time Edoja's got other things that people can hop on in a sort of decentralized way. But um, but I mean, you start you touched on adoption there briefly. So, um, you know, is there could you sort of explain how Edoja caters for both the sort of small scale um, sort of business to the large scale of you know IoT deployments? Yeah, well, I think you know. Obviously, we give the we, we we put the power in the hands of somebody who's just ha who has one 3D printer, 3D printer, and that's you know that's additive manufacturing, <coughs> and you know the options there are, are pretty much unlimited. They're only limited by your own imagination, um, particularly when if if you move into the design side of things, and then you know when, with a large scale manufacturing facility, um, you know you can have you know, um, you know, mills, lathes, uh, plasma cutters, you know, water jets, uh, EDM, you, you name it, P, you know, PCB manufacturing, which I, I maybe we'll touch on that too a little bit. Cause uh, I think that's a, a really easy thing for people to get started doing without a lot of overhead. <laughs> Again, I apologize um, for being sick. This is how dare you <laughs> really great timing. <laughs> But don't worry, we can, you know, I've got plan to um, sort of discuss up and coming developments and things like that. Um, now, with all these sort of 3D printers and, well, and also including sort of what Edoja was also known for, which was 
you know, all those devices for the plants and things. Um, uh, for those who are watching, not all those plants are legal uh, all over the world <laughs> that you may see on the video. If you're in the UK, definitely not legal. We're not advocating that you grow those plants. But in certain parts of the States, it definitely is legal and you can do that. But um, but um, but yes, I mean, including that side of things as well, not just the 3D printing. How does Edoja manage sort of things like firmware updates and stuff like that? And are there updates required with the 3D printing? It, it, that's normally at the hardware level on the user side because um, there's so many different 3D printers out there right now. And, you know, firmware updates do occur over time with different manufacturer, you know, providers of that hardware. <clears throat> um, now, Mike Bacon, uh, who was a, a, a team member for quite a while, he we were, we were originally developing a, a piece of hardware called the Cardano Box. And the Cardano box was essentially a node that would run a light, a, a wallet, um, a client for the network, and it could host its own uh, manufacturing files and all those kind of things. And kind of replace, uh, not maybe not replace, but kind of act as like a, a side by side companion with your three D printer. I mean, I can see that as coming soon on on the website. That's sort of, that full node wallet is on the website. Yeah, and so, and that's probably going to happen because um, it was functional before, and we kind of pivoted. Um, and so, anyway, when now when that happens, there probably will be more firmware updates and that kind of thing from our side um, as time goes on. But we'll see. So, how does you know we got people watching? They're like, I've got a three D printer, you know, or or whatever. How, what is the process like for them now, right now, watching to sort of get involved and get started with Edoja, whether it's 3D printing or, or anything else? Yeah, go to edoja.market. Um, you, you'll use your wallet, a CIP30 wallet. We are on the preview network, I believe. I could be wrong, so don't hold me to that. Yeah, there's quite a few uh, test nets these days. Yeah, we're on, it's, on, it's pre prior or preview. I'm pretty sure it's preview, though. Um, we go create an account and go play around, get some, go to the, uh, the test net faucet, get some test net ADA and play around on the, on the platform and, and see, you know, pull some files down try to 3d print them, um, and reach out to, to me or Peter or Kyle or Lloyd or anybody on the team and we'll, and we'll work with you. I was going to ask, yeah, what kind of support and resources are available? for um I'll, I'll be available for you anytime <laughs> i've always done i've always had that kind of ethos and um i mean i'm here right now and i'm and i feel terrible and i appreciate you for being here as well but I, <laughs> but i'm happy i'm happy to do it and i want and i want to do it i want to help people so that's kind of my my job so i want to talk about your sort of future vision uh a little bit not just for a doja but i mean so where do you see the future of iot heading and 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 actually how does a doja fit into that honestly with the you know with the innovations in ai it's kind of hard to say um it's it's definitely gonna i, I think in two years we can have this conversation it'll be radically different mm. um if, if even that long because things have changed so much in the, just the last year yeah it's a outrageously uh yeah it's moving at a fast pace i saw a couple of days ago there was a uh uh i can't remember the name of it now the one though um but there's a group of people who developed the ai software developer and that right there alone can i mean there, that's huge a huge headwind shift um especially you know particularly with you know established developers who they might have a github full of code and they can unleash this AI into their GitHub and, you know, end up making huge maximizations in a very short period of time. And so, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm anxious to see where we are in a year or two. It's yeah, it's funny. I talk to a lot of different people, whether it's graphic designers, writers, you know, and people like yourself. Yeah. And I get the same response, you know, but yeah, I guess in that we'll have to see. So, but, um, 
But I mean, what have you got? So I mean, there's a, if you go to your website, you've got a lot of coming up things or coming soon yeah. stuff. So let's talk about what are the the real exciting new features that are you know on the horizon for Edoja. I think it's it's going to be the the migration to Aiken and then the spinning up of the side chain. That's that's going to be a lot of fun for us. And you know, one thing I didn't mention earlier is is the purpose behind that. One one of the big purposes behind that is we discovered on on mainnet we had some parallelism issues. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And kind of what that looked like was if you had four or five people come in to buy the same thing at the same time there was essentially a collision and uh, like a slot battle. Yep. And so that's kind of what we were trying to avoid and um, going to the side chain. And actually we didn't have to go to a side chain to, to correct that. Um, Quinn was able to make some changes in a smart contract that would kind of take care of that problem. Um, but going to the side chain would help us, I guess, uh, detect those issues much, much quicker. And you know, make those changes quicker. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the, the big things are definitely going to be um, moving to Aiken and the side chain, and being being able to use the Doja token to run that side chain and bring more more utility there. Also, okay, yeah. So you mentioned yeah the changes to the smart contract and stuff. So I mean, apart from that, I mean, what other sort of challenges have you sort of faced? Well, well, you know, growing Edoja because, like, like I said, you started off with um, all your humidity stuff and plant-related stuff, and now moving into three D printing. So, yeah, I mean, what are your, yeah, what are the main challenges, and what did you do to overcome them? I think the main challenges that we face, honestly, have been human-related. They get sick and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> <coughs> we're, we're fickle creatures. Um, we're biologic, so things go wrong. Um, I think a lot of there, there, there was a handful of ambassadors that got involved with the project early on, and you know they understood the idea of Adosia, but a, a lot of them, maybe not a lot of them, but I know some of them got the idea that this was going to all happen overnight, and this was never a short-term, fast-build project. It was going to be a long, there's a long research phase, a long development phase, and then a long. Uh, you know, reiteration phase and, and refinement phase. And so we had some ambassadors who were really involved early on. And then I think they got, I don't know, I guess they had ideas and those ideas weren't met and they kind of uh, went dark on us. But I mean, it's, I don't know if that's, I guess it's a problem, um, a <laughs> challenge. Um, I guess it's more of a personal thing for me because you know, I, I love everybody who's have been involved with the project so far. Um, they're all great people. And, you know, it's it's always sad to see people, you know, go away or become disillusioned with something. Mm. But but if any of those people may listen to this, I do I do want to kind of reiterate that, you know, we we care about what we're building and I hope that everybody else does too. And it's not none of this is gonna happen overnight. It's it's a slow roll. You know, we have to, you know, we have to, we have to research. We have to, you know, find flaws and correct those flaws because once something like this goes to mainnet on the side chain or whatever, there's no going back. There's no going back. And it, it has to be right the first time. Okay. Um, so I guess, I mean, to close it off, you know, where, where do people go to find out, um, you know, to, to learn more about Edoja and start using its platform? Yeah, well, find us on Twitter for sure. X, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're uh, at Adoja IO, and uh, we have several websites. <laughs> but the important one is Adoja.market. If you go over to Adoja.market, you can find links to the Twitter and the Discord. And, and join the Discord. Come jam with us over there. Um, myself, Eric, Peter, um, Kyle, Lloyd, uh, Caleb. The whole crew, we're all over there. And so we can help you. Um, no matter what what kind of what part of the path you're on, we can help na help you navigate that. Okay, cool. Well, I think that kind of that brings us to a close. So, you know, for people out there who are, you know, you've got a 3D printer, there's 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 a business in a box sitting there waiting for you. And Edoja are building that platform 
for for you to do that and start that business no sales involved just putting your price out there and you know it's about you just being competitive with everyone else i guess yeah fantastic right well thanks for your time chris and uh, thanks for peter who's already gone <laughs> but um yeah no thanks for that and uh yeah looking forward to seeing how he does he does your progresses over the next sort of uh six to twelve months yeah me too we spent the end well we since since cardano has native had native assets we've been working on this project and through this past bear market that's i mean we we've, we've been in there doing the thing and um things are starting to firm up so i'm, I'm glad we've got kind of got governance a good hold on governance and what that looks like for the project and uh, and you know a solid plan moving forward awesome all right thanks man thank you brother so that was a doja you know that's a great project fusing the internet of things and the blockchain but also creating opportunities for people across the world you know anyone with a 3d printer essentially has got has got business there can start manufacturing products for people who want them which is which is great but you've also got that other side that automation side we never mentioned it in the video but carl solomon the ceo of um a doja was watering his plants by sending space coins to a wallet so that sort of automate automation there is is really sort of cool and, and innovative so i'm really keen to uh, see how that grows can't wait for that marketplace you know to really come together but as promised as you heard chris was pretty poorly so I've just made a little something, spent a few minutes just to put all his coughs together for you in a little bit of an entertaining way. So for now, I'll see you next time. And I'll leave you with this. I feel like crap today. Excuse me. Gosh. Excuse me. Gosh. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me.